Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And whoa, we have got to fix this. Okay, so we're going to talk about how do we reduce that bust angle on a gown. Uh, so first off, let me clear some things up. There's lots of different names for this. You'll hear bust curve, bust angle, the apex of the bust, small bust adjustment, lots of different names here. Um, while I deconstruct here, I'm uh, just going to talk about this issue. Um, so this particular gown, I have altered the bust of several times. Um, some brides choose to fill it, um, but a lot of brides have me actually change the angle of the bust. It just is really unnaturally pronounced. Um, so I'm going to show you how that I uh, take this apart. I'm going to loosen this boning here, free it up with my razor. Take out those bus pads, as you see, I laid them to the side. Um, and I'm gonna work with the boning a little bit differently than normal. A lot of times you're just gonna cut out the boning and replace the whole strip. But I wanna just show you another technique that you can do, because sometimes it's hard to get to. All right, so right now I'm gesturing how I'm going to change the angle of that there. Okay, I have a lot of scissors. <laughs> right there just in case I need them uh, but what I want to talk about with this boning is instead of always replacing the entire stick of boning because sometimes maybe you can't get to it very easily or something I'm gonna splint the boning okay so think about um, you know first aid somebody breaks their leg whatever make a splint that that's kind of the idea of what we're gonna do we're gonna take this broken boning we're gonna sew it down to these um, to the new bust that we're making now I'll uh, sew it down really securely right there to that to that new line, just like that. Um, and then you'll see in a minute, it's going to kind of be a little shaky, Jake. And we're going to splint um, the part where the, the two pieces of boning line back up. All right, so I'm using some pretty thick thread here. It's doubled up. Nice, strong, size one needle, long and strong. I use those needles a lot. I need to talk to you guys sometimes about the brand of needles because some of them break. Some of them are smoother than others. Uh, so as you know, I'm kind of brand loyal about stuff and I don't mind sharing it. You can always go to my website, Bridal Sewing Techniques, by the way. I do have a products page uh, where I spill the beans on all my favorite products. So you can get some too. All right, so you see these two pieces are meeting up now. I'm gonna knot that off. Rinka, rinka. That's not good. Can't leave it like that. So what I've done here is I've got like, you know, inch and a half, two inch long pieces of boning, half inch boning, and I'm heat sealing the edge. I want them to be low profile. So I'm not putting muslin stoppers on the end. I'm heat sealing them. What that's going to do is that's going to take the stays, the little, the little sticks that run through the boning, and that's actually going to fuse them together. They're going to melt together. So now I'm going to sew this splint on here. Um, again, this is an alternative way. I figured a lot of you would be familiar with just replacing the boning. I just wanted to talk about this so that you know that you do have other options. This dress is also very thick. If this was a thin dress and was, you know, really unforgiving, showed every little bump, you absolutely could not do this. Um, but this is one of those dresses that you're like, oh my goodness, seriously, like you needed to line the lining before you lined the other lining. It's, it's like that. Just piles and piles of layers. Um, so none of this work on the inside is going to show through at all. We can use nice, big, strong knots. And you can see now it doesn't move at all. So we're going to close up, you know, one of the many lining layers. And you can see how now the bust overlaps a little bit. We're going to pin that in place and we're just going to tack that together. Just a nice long stitch to hold that together.
making sure the pins don't go through. They're only going to be on that one little lining layer. All right, now we got to do the same thing to the other side. Take that bus curve down. And as you've noticed, I'm sewing and doing all this video stuff at twice the normal speed. I wanted to show you everything. I didn't want to neglect any part of this project, but you also, you know, it's so involved. You don't, you don't want to sit around and watch me do this <laughs> in real time. Here we go. Now you do have to make sure the tricky part here um, that you can't really tell is tricky that you really need to pay attention to is you have got to get all of these angles exactly the same. Every time you reduce the apex of the bust here, small bust adjustment, whatever you want to call it, it's got to be the same. All right. So now I'm showing you the lace overlay and how um, that needs to be taken up. Here I've kind of drawn on the picture. You can see how much it needs to be taken up. Now we're not gonna put seams there. There's no seams in the lace. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna have to break up the lace. Um, sometimes it's like appliques that are just all sewn together and whatnot. That's not the case here. Um, this is like a larger piece of lace. And there may be some breaks in the lace, but there aren't any um, there, there's there's nothing near where I need to work that I can just open up and, and change it. So I am just breaking all the little connectors between the flowers and the leaves and that kind of thing. You'll notice I'm taking a very like organic approach. I'm not just cutting right through that big flower. I'm kind of cutting around it, snipping. Very zigzaggy. What you don't want are straight harsh lines those are the ones that are going to jump out at you anything you do that's curved that's not going to show that's being a little persnickety we'll get it All right, so now we have this tool layer. I'm going to open that up as well. Now we need to clean it out, get all those little threads out of there, overlap the tool. And the way we're going to overlap the lace, we're not just going to take like the lace on the right and slap it over the lace on the left. No, we're going to kind of do like puzzle pieces or um, kind of like how your fingers intertwine when you hold hands with your spouse. That's what we want to do with the lace. Um, so the piece on the right may overlap and then the piece on the left and kind of back and forth. Just keep with the real natural look and that's what's going to make it more convincing. Um, the work that you do with the bust is so important. If you think of all the pictures on the wedding day of the bouquet, the bust line, the bride's face, um, it's just a major focal point and you want it to look absolutely perfect. So you can see here I'm pinning all the edges down. I just love long quilting pins. All these seamstresses that just always use the little dainty silk pins. My hat's off to them. I use them sometime if they're going to mar the fabric, but I, I just like my long pins. So you see I have to open up a little bit more down here. Whatever you got to do to make it lay right. Just kind of finesse it a little bit. There we go. It's molded to the new shape. So now we got to work on the other side. All right. So here's a picture of all the pins after the work has been done on both sides. And then I kind of superimposed a drawing of where the new little boundary is. 
you would just, you'd never know. You, you can't see that because it's not straight. So that is super important when working with lace. So now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to stitch all along the outline of that lace. Um, the thing that's important here is to make sure you don't stitch too deeply. That's when it's going to be kind of pulling funny and stuff. You don't want that. Um, so you want to stitch lace to lace and don't dig too deep with that needle. Just wanted to remind you guys, please hit the red subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Um, this video took hours and hours to produce. So we need those subscribers. Wow, the bride was so happy. It looks so much better. Uh, so anyways, I hope this helped you. I wish you many magical moments in your bridal sewing studio. Have a good day.